Hello and welcome. I'm Mike. I'm Kevin. And we are the founders of Spectora. Today we're here to talk to you about home inspector marketing. We are here at the InterNACHI House of Horrors in Boulder, Colorado. And we are happy to tell you uh, all the different ways that you can get business as a new home inspector. My name is Kevin Wagstaff. I'm one of the founders of Spectora. To give you a little bit of my background, I was a real estate agent here in Denver for six years. So I saw a lot of home inspection reports, worked with a lot of home inspectors, and that helped inform our experience with building Spectora. Uh, I also worked at Home Advisor on their dedicated SEO team. So I learned a lot of what the big companies do to get business to their websites um, and kind of how they operate. So we're bringing that to you guys here today. And my name is Mike Wagstaff. I am the software engineer and designer behind the Spectora platform. So if some of you end up using our platform, I'm the guy that wrote all the code that runs all of it. Prior to that, I was a software engineer as well as a user interface, user experience designer for uh, companies both large and small. You'll see some of the Fortune 500 companies I did consulting for. I also work with a lot of small scale startups. And so uh, what I bring, especially this presentation, is uh, some of that business sense, some of that design sense on what you can do as a new business to get more leads, to get more clients, to build a very healthy business practice based on things like good website design, um, good use of all of the resources that you have at your disposal technology-wise. If you haven't heard about us yet, Spectora is basically an all-in-one home inspection software platform. We build both the report writing software to use, so mobile apps when you're on site, as well as the web platform that you'll use to deliver your reports to both your clients as well as the agents. It includes a lot of different tools in terms of how to market and run your business. So we'll talk a little bit about the use of automated emails, the reminders that go out before your inspection, the follow-ups that you send out after your inspection, and how you can use those as part of your business process. Uh, we'll talk about uh, integrated payments, online agreement acceptance. That's all kind of baked into our software. Online scheduling is something that we include in all of the websites that we build. We also do uh, ad campaigns, SEO services, and email newsletters for our inspectors. So we work with uh, thousands of inspectors every single day to help grow their business. And uh, that's kind of the vantage point that we're taking as we're giving you these tools. These are the things that we see that have helped uh, the successful home inspectors that we work with grow their business amazingly fast. As new home inspectors, many of you will uh, face a lot of challenges getting out there and encountering competition. These are things that we see work that get guys earning six figures in their first year, maybe expanding to multi-inspector companies very quickly. Um, so that's kind of the perspective and uh, the reason you should listen to this presentation. If you want to know more about our software, spectora.com is where to find out more. But uh, for now, we'll just dive into uh, all the useful tips for you. All right, so how do you get business as a new home inspector? It's a question we ask every month at our classes, and some of the common answers are agents, agent presentations, coffee meetings with agents. Some people go directly online. Some of you guys will hit social media very hard to start. There's lots of different ways you can get business, so we just wanna give you all the different ways that you can get business. First, agent presentations is gonna be the big focus, and we're gonna start with that first because that's obviously something as new inspectors you guys know you need to be doing right away. The second bucket we're gonna talk about is paid advertising. That's something some of you might be thinking about doing, but if you need to learn more about it, we'll get into the specifics of it. And the third bucket is your medium to long-term business, which is online marketing and SEO. And so that's when you Google something, the 10 blue links that show up, we're all used to clicking on one of those, that's SEO and how you rank there. And the hope is to give you guys a blueprint of how you're gonna start your business immediately and get those first few inspections and then move into those medium term of how you're gonna get the next maybe dozens or hundreds of inspections as well as how you're gonna fill up your pipeline for the long term so that you can stay in this business for many years to come. And keep in mind we've designed this track based on what we've seen work from experienced inspectors that we work with. So this is a natural progression of going from agents to paid advertising, to online marketing. You don't have to do all these, but this is just what we've seen work well. First, we're gonna start talking about agent presentations. So this is usually the first thing you'll do to get in front of those agents initially and get those first few inspections. This is often the best way to hit the ground running with a new business. And when we ask the question of what are you going to do for your presentation, or what are you gonna to do to make an impression on agents, the answer we usually get is I'll bring in my business cards and flyers and drop them off. So newsflash, they're probably just gonna get thrown in the trash you don't want to do the bare minimum. So we want to talk about how you're going to be different and how you're going to differentiate. If you're in a competitive market like Florida that some of you are in, you're going to need to think outside of the box and think about how you're different than all the other inspectors in your market. 
So that's going to require some creativity. And we want you guys to keep in mind throughout all of this, think about what every other inspector is doing. It's very easy for inspectors to go and leave some business cards in a real estate agent's office. And so we're just going to really encourage you throughout all of this to be different, to think outside the box. And so when it comes to being different, oftentimes we hear, okay, bring food. Every, everybody recommends that inspectors bring food to a real estate agent's office. Um, guess what the most common one is? Donuts. And so we're encouraging you to say, all right, what can I do that's different than what all the other home inspectors in my market are doing to try and get the agent's attention? Uh, we're not saying you necessarily have to bring uh, fruit bouquets, but think about what's different. What have we heard that's worked from some of our uh, inspectors that are doing quite well? Yeah, so we hear uh, Yeti mugs, uh, pens, pads, coffee mugs. Think of things that agents use every day. So think about brand impressions. So it's a game of getting your logo in front of as many agents as possible. Uh, you'll see on the screen up here, we also have an article that an inspector wrote that helps agents out. So you're really thinking about how you can either provide value in some way or provide some brandable materials that they'll see every day. When marketers do research, they find that you need at least seven brand impressions to truly register in your potential client's mind. And so think about that as you go. You're not just trying to get in front of them once or twice, You're trying to get in front of them seven times. And so if that involves leaving them a mug that they're gonna see every day, well, hey, after a week, they, they really are gonna think about your brand when they think about home inspectors. Uh, pens and paper, of course, you can get creative here because of course we want you to think outside the box. Another way you can be different is your actual report. So of course, this is the deliverable that you're gonna leave your client and your agent with. And so uh, what you see on the screen here on the left is your usual old school checklist box. And so keep in mind that in a lot of markets, the active home inspectors might still be using that or even pen and paper. We see a lot of inspectors um, that are switching from carbon copy pen and paper to software now. So if you have a modern report with um, a very readable format, maybe it's web-based, maybe it's um, using photos, videos, these are ways that you can differentiate yourself. Uh, I know that with Spectora inspectors, they've had great results going around two different agencies and showing the modern report and saying that they're getting leads just off of that because we designed it basically to appeal to the, the modern home buyer and the modern real estate agent in terms of uh, usability, user-friendliness. And this hasn't traditionally been a marketing tool, but in today's day and age, this has now become something you can market as being unique and different. And so um, I wouldn't underestimate the power of a modern, clean report because agents, they wanna save time and they want something that's easy to understand. So think about your whole business of how it's all marketing. It's all your marketing. And of course, um, you know whether it's weeks or months down the road, your client may pull out your home inspection report to refer back to something, maybe what type of material are my pipes, uh, what is something that I need to fix that I remember from the maintenance checklist. And so just keep in mind that that report's also another way to create lasting brand impressions that might uh, pay dividends many months or years down the road. So make sure that you choose your report format wisely is the takeaway from this slide. All right, so there's a whole lot of other reasons an agent would try. This slide is a little busy, but of course, since you have the slides, you can parse it on your own. And just a few that we want to touch on here. If you're making your agent's life easier, that's a great thing. All agents want to save time. Everybody's busy. So if you're sending them reminders of the uh, upcoming inspection, if you're sending them follow-ups just to see if they have any questions, those are great ways to um, not only stay in mind with your agents, but to just make their lives a little bit easier, they feel like you're on top of things and just reflects great upon your business. The repair addendum starter in uh, most states, this is something that gets delivered after the home inspection. If uh, the software that you utilize helps them do that, that's gonna be a great way for you to tell them, I'm gonna save you time, it's gonna be much easier to work with me as a home inspector um, than my competition. The takeaway is just think deeply about the reasons why they really would use you over someone that they're comfortable with and trust. And think that they don't owe you the business, they don't owe you referrals, you have to really give them reasons to use you and it's usually making their life easier. What else, uh, during your time as an agent, what else would you say were things that um, really elevated home inspectors in your eyes? There was a number of things. There, I used an inspector once because he sent me a good email campaign, a well done MailChimp email made me feel that he was professional and on the ball, so I used him for that. Um, another inspector I really connected with personally and I felt like he was good with clients on site. Um, and a third inspector, the report was really modern and easy to read. So there's a number of reasons and it's gonna be different for each segment of agents. So you really just have to kind of look at your business holistically and make sure that you're up to date with technology um, and also putting professional stuff out there. 
And of course, we don't want to um, underplay the importance of the people skills, some of those soft skills. We see things on here like they like you. You make the clients feel great on site. And these are super important. A lot of these come down to personality differences. But I would say to those of you that feel like you're really good with people, uh, walk your clients through during the inspection. We have some guys that invite their clients to come through and follow them around on every inspection. They are almost acting as if they're the educator of the home, and that gets great reviews. Clients love that, agents love that. Um, for other inspectors, maybe they'll have the uh, client and agent join them during the last half hour of the inspection to go over results. And maybe that appeals to you more if you want to really focus on the house before anybody arrives without somebody looking over your shoulder. So kind of get a sense of the um, type of inspector you are and consider that when it comes to uh, how you market yourself and what you um, promote as your unique value propositions. Uh, one thing that we haven't mentioned here yet, free information in the form of continuing ed courses, training, newsletters. Uh, we've had some inspectors that get certified to do continuing education credit hours in their state for realtors. And so um, I guess you talked to him. How, how did he say the one that we're talking about here has gotten almost all his business from this. Yeah, check with your state, see if that's something you can offer. Um, the requirements may not be as strict as you think, but this is an easy way to grow your business phenomenally if you can provide that CE, because it's something all agents need to do, so you wanna be where they are. Current inspectors are tiring. Uh, many of you will live in markets where there's a changing of the guard happening. A lot of inspectors are getting out of the business, uh, demographic factors, they're retiring. And so this is a phenomenal opportunity. New inspectors, I think, right now have so much potential because they can um, not only scoop up the business that is being left out there on the table, but you can leverage like modern tools that maybe the com competition hasn't been doing. Uh, we hear from a lot of realtors that uh, modern reports are a breath of fresh air, just using technology to coordinate, schedule. These are all things that you can leverage as a new inspector coming into the industry. So just keep in mind that uh, you have tremendous advantages even though there are established inspectors in your market. And one line I'll, I'll leave with you guys, a bonus tip here is one that I heard that works really well with agents is saying, I don't wanna be your number one inspector. I don't wanna be your go-to guy. I just wanna be your number two. You're gonna get your foot in the door because their current inspector or even their top two or three are gonna be busy and then they try you out and that's where you can win them over with all the other things we're talking about here but it's a good line to say, I just wanna be your backup inspector. And of course, um, we talk to hundreds of inspectors every day. We have thousands of inspectors that we interact with. And so if you have any questions about um, more things you can do in agent presentations, we answer questions all the time. Um, on spectora.com, we have a chat bowl, so you can always hop on and ask us questions if you'd like further info on this topic. So big takeaways from this. Be prepared. If you're going into an agent presentation, just know how you're gonna be different, how you're gonna offer value to the agents and uh, come in there just ready to wow them. And you wanna be different, differentiators. Always think about that. I don't want anyone going on an agent presentation until you have three ways that you're different from inspectors in your market. Um, and then also add value. It sounds simple, but really think deeply about how you're gonna make an agent's life easier, give them information, entertain them. It's gotta be something other than, hey, I'm an inspector and I need business. A lot of modern marketing nowadays is giving value before you get value. And um, that's gonna be a theme throughout our presentation and it starts even in the, uh, in the agent presentations where you're coming through and saying, here's not only food or maybe free gear, but um, here's a bunch of things that I can offer you as an agent to make your life easier. So keep these things in mind as you uh, swing by agent offices and we think you'll be off to a great start. All right, so next we're gonna shift gears and go into um, what often becomes that medium term. After you've gotten your foot in the door with some agents, maybe you've gotten a few paid inspections under your belt, you're wondering how am I gonna get the next several dozen, several hundred inspections so that I can uh, truly make a living and pay the bills with this. And one thing that we find to be uh, the most effective way to get inspections now is paid advertising. So for those of you unfamiliar with where ads are or what is an ad or isn't an ad, Here's a view of the Google search results where on the top there you see paid advertising slots. So you see four ads there. In your market, if you search for home inspector your city, you'll probably see a number of ads there and if you're in a good sized city. And then down below you see the organic results and that is where you, you do not pay to be there. So at the top you pay for those ads when someone clicks. Down below is SEO which we'll get into later in the presentation. So of course Google does research and they find that you get basically two to one for every dollar you spend on AdWords. And so um, that varies of course by industry, 
but we have seen many inspectors get uh, a lot more money back than they put in when it comes to using paid ads. So we definitely encourage people to experiment with it and consider it. Of course, mobile ads look a little bit different than ads on the desktop, but we want you to know that they function in the same way and you set them up very similar ways. Of course, you can get calls on mobile, and so that's one thing that we'll talk about uh, as we go through how to set up ads correctly. All right, so here's some examples of if you're writing ad copy and creating these ads on your own that you want to keep in mind. If someone's managing this for you, you want to make sure they're, they're doing these things. So you want to use numbers and emotional words in your ads. So in this one, uh, it says save up to $150. That just catches a consumer's eye and it makes them want to click to learn more. And you also see the phone number there and open hours. So you really want to draw them in with these things that are different and unique compared to other ads. And some of you may decide you don't want to take calls after 9 p.m. Some of you may have open now always because you want to get calls. A lot of this is up to you and you set this up when you're setting up your profiles as well as your ad campaigns. We'll talk to you a little bit more about how this looks. And here's another example of using the words trust and this is a big purchase um, asking a question. Do you need a home inspection? These are little techniques that Google ad professionals use. So if this is something you're going at on your own, definitely write in and let us know if you have questions. It's something we're happy to guide on. Um, but there's definitely techniques where you can get these clicks and book inspections from these ads. So we're going to just go through a case study to um, kind of exemplify what we're talking about here. And so uh, one thing that we do for all of the ad campaigns that we, we run for our inspectors is create custom landing pages. And the reason is because we want to track how effective the ads are. So if you're setting up your own ad campaign, you don't necessarily want to send it to your homepage because then it's just going to be mixed in with people finding your homepage through every other means that you have out there. So by creating a custom page on your website where an ad leads to lets you know exactly how much page views are coming in from that particular ad. And on the landing page, it's always best to make it easy to, whether it's request a quote, schedule an inspection, basically do the thing you want them to do, which is get you a lead. And before you pay for any advertising or run any ads, we always recommend a landing page because it constrains options. There's no menu you'll notice on this page. There's no footer. It really gets the home buyer to do what you want them to do, which is get a quote or book an inspection. So with this particular inspector, they ran an ad for 18 days and they had 74 total clicks. So that means that somebody actually clicked on the ad or clicked on the phone number to call them. So 74 leads, which is pretty amazing for, uh, they spent $186. And so depending on how many of those 74 leads you convert, that can end up being quite a bit of money if your average inspection is between $300 and $500. And keep in mind, it's a numbers game when it comes to ads, right? So if you get 74 clicks, you know some of those will be bogus clicks. Um, and then a, a small percentage of them will be very legit home buyers looking for a home inspection. So as you can see here, got two requested quotes from that. So two people filled out that conversion form saying, I want to book an inspection and also 20 phone calls. So you have to believe out of these numbers that if you were to do this, you would get a couple inspections from this. And that's typically the return on investment we see. And as you'll see here, 22 leads in 18 days. Very powerful numbers. And another important stat here is that over 7,000 people saw the ad. So even if they didn't click on it, that's still a brand impression for you in your market. And so keep in mind, it's not just the, the clicks, but constantly running ads is a way to get people to think about your brand, to think about your company. And maybe they click on the ad next month, maybe in two months. And so it's um, part of, I think, a holistic long-term strategy for growing a business is to have ad campaigns running. And one thing we often hear is that, oh, I never click on ads. Do people actually click on ads? And believe it or not, they do. It's a small percentage, and it typically happens when people are looking to hire somebody. So keep in mind that when someone's looking to take action to hire a home inspector, they're more likely to click on an ad. So it's, uh, it is an effective route. Facebook ads are another place to run ads. And so uh, here are a couple examples of some of the ad campaigns we've ran for our inspectors on Facebook. What do, you, what do you think about Facebook ads in general? So I think they're good for brand impressions. Um, only in some markets we've seen inspectors book inspections from running ads on Facebook. So traditionally social media is a place for people to be entertained or to connect with other people. So you can run ads there that are good typically for agents. So if you want to connect with agents, that can be a good cheap place to get those brand impressions so they see your logo they see your brand over and over. And it's typically going to be more uh, cost effective than Google ads. They might follow your page as well. And so that's an opportunity for you to do maybe newsletter marketing down the road. And so we don't recommend maybe the new inspector start immediately with Facebook ads, but it's something to consider as you get a little bit deeper into the business.
Yep. And this just illustrates how cheap it is to do it if you did want to test it out. I think spending $50 or $100 to test is always a good rule of thumb. Um, as with everything we're telling you, don't believe us. Let's test it out and see if it actually results in more business. I think it's a great point. Uh, markets vary tremendously across the country, across the world. And so with anything that we say here, your mileage may vary and um, costs for ads vary, response rates on ads vary. And so I think it's important to keep in mind that these little tests, throw 50 bucks, throw 100 bucks at something, see what happens, try something else, and then continue to do the things that work. Um, that's a great strategy for anybody. If you go in the forums, you'll hear people bash pretty much anything you want to try. And bear in mind that is for their particular experience in their particular market. And so just know that there's uh, tremendous variation. And with any strategy, there's gonna be little tweaks that you can make that make or break it working. So keep in mind that there's probably not professionals um, doing a lot of these campaigns that these home inspectors may speak about. So test it for yourself. Here's some more targeting aspects on Facebook. You can target people in a certain city, people that have just bought a home within 25 miles of where you live. So there's a lot of good deep targeting that you can do on Facebook. Um, just know that that's available and it's a tool for you there, but you wanna do something that's local, relevant, helpful, or funny, you cannot just post need a home inspection on Facebook, that's gonna be end up being a waste of your money. Yeah, just remember that it's a different context. Uh, people search on Google for home inspector when they're ready to hire, so it makes sense to try and get that inspection booked right then. On Facebook, you are looking to give them something else that makes them just engage with your brand, with your, you know, whether it's your Facebook page or your website more. So just bear in mind that these are two very different platforms with um, different purposes for advertising. So here's a quick Facebook uh, case study. Now we mentioned Facebook is not great for booking inspections. In this particular case, we had an inspector in Florida that ran an ad for new construction inspections and it did particularly well. So he, we made a landing page for him and he generated a good amount of leads. So we put the buttons on there and you see 14 people clicked through to the landing page and it only costed him $1.67 per click. So while we're saying, hey, it doesn't usually lead to inspections, in this case it did. So that's why we say test, test, test because we tracked it well and we, he got uh, two conversions and two inspections from this ad. So if you break down, he spent only $23 on ads. Over a thousand people saw the ad. So that's 1,166 1, brand impressions. And he got two inspections out of it. So $23, he got back 600. That's a pretty good return on investment. Uh, that's something that he is definitely repeating and continuing to utilize. And we've, gone, we've worked with him to further optimize it to increase it even more since then. Um, so this shows you some of the potential as well as some of the reasons why you can experiment with different things in your market. All right, so lead gen sites, a lot of you probably have been approached or will be approached by some of these sites you see here. It's another thing where we really preach to test it out if you think it could be a viable option to get inspections. Um, the home advisors at Thumbtacks of the world, they have good marketplaces where people actually visit and go to hire an inspector. So I wouldn't just trust whatever you hear from a handful of inspectors, I would actually learn a little bit more, feel free to ask us. We have experience with a lot of these sites, um, but test for yourself and see if it has a good return on investment. All right, so just to uh, recap some of the main points here. Again, each market is different, so focus on the return on investment for any given avenue that you're trying. There's always gonna be the emotional side of, of paying out money before you receive money. That's the nature of advertising, that's the nature of marketing. So just make sure that you're um, kind of removing the emotion from it and just looking at it purely from a numbers game. If I spend this much, how much do I get back? Try that out with each one and continue to do the ones that work. And one point here that inspectors often don't think of is that if you pay to get a lead from a lead generation site or paid advertising, you also have an opportunity to meet another agent through that who could give you more referrals in the future. So keep in mind that it, it could be a two for one or three for one um, on this investment. All right, so now we are going to talk to you about search engine optimization. So this is kind of a fancy word for Google ranking. Where do you show up when somebody searches? So for those of you not familiar, here's the traditional search results page. As we talked about earlier, the ads are on top, so you pay to be there when someone clicks. And then you have the Google Maps 3-pack is what you'll hear it as, where Google has an algorithm that determines where you rank there locally. And then you have the 10 blue links that we're all familiar with, and that's the organic search rankings. So of course, it's uh, really great to be on that front page when somebody searches for home inspector your town, because then you're just gonna get a lot of uh, what we call organic leads. People are just finding you without having to pay for anything. Uh, this is how you create a long-term sustainable business where maybe home buyers are finding you directly instead of just listening to their agent recommendations. 
um, often agents will find you uh, directly when they're looking for a new home inspector. Yep, this is how I found an agent actually, when, or uh, how I found a home inspector when I was looking for a new home inspector. I actually Googled Home Inspector Denver and found one that had a good web presence there. So uh, let's talk about why SEO is important. Clients are researching you guys, they're searching for you. You have to remember that anytime an agent gives a recommendation to a home buyer, what are they doing? They go and type either your brand name or they search on their own and do their research. So this just illustrates that there is well over 100,000 searches on average every month for something home inspection related. So people are searching for me and these numbers are from Google themselves. So that is further proof that people are going there. Let us know if you'd like to know numbers for your particular town or city. Because um, of course the search volume, you know, sometimes it's in the hundreds, sometimes it's in the thousands per month. Um, those are all leads that you could potentially be getting if you rank highly. And this information can be found by you guys on your own if you create a Google Ads account. Um, it is kind of difficult to set up, so just let us know if you need any help with that. Uh, another reason, clients and agents are researching you. So uh, even if an agent gives a referral to a home buyer, so for example, when you were my realtor, you gave me some uh, referrals. The first thing I did was Google them. And that is, um, for better or worse, the millennial market. That's how they validate if somebody is good and legit. They'll go and look at you online. And so you'll see an example of somebody that's maybe neglected their online presence on this slide right now. Instead of a logo or a picture of him as the inspector, he has just some trees in front of his house. This is because he didn't create his Google My Business profile and add his image that he wants to display there. So I think a big takeaway is if you do nothing else, go home, make a Google My Business profile, and this is where you get to set up uh, the image that will display, the name of your business, the opening hours, the contact information. So this is all within your control. You tell Google what to display when somebody searches for you. Uh, something else you'll notice, there's not that many great reviews for this particular inspector. He maybe hasn't been asking for reviews when he wows a client. And so when somebody else searches, they might not think that he's as good of an inspector as he is. So just know what your search results page looks like when you Google your own brand name because that's what a real estate agent is going to do after you do an agent presentation. So that's also very important on the agent presentation front. And neglecting your online presence can actually lose you business. A lot of inspectors don't even know how much business they're losing by not paying attention to their online presence. This is just an example that if, if you're not paying attention to your website and your online presence, Google will actually show other businesses when people are searching for you. So keep in mind that Google knows if you're not really presenting yourself how you should be online and they'll, they'll find someone else for the home buyer agent to hire. Yeah, to reiterate, I think it's really important. We search for a particular home inspection uh, company's brands. It showed us that as well as a competitor that ranks higher, that has better reviews. And so Google is basically saying, hey, uh, I know you're searching for this person, but maybe you want to talk to this person instead because they're better. And so you have to pay attention to your online presence or else you'll just never hear from those folks that aren't uh, getting to your website. So the, bo the bottom line here, guys, is we don't want you to have less reliance on agent referrals. The average tenure for agents is less than three years. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you have great agents that are going to be referring you business, that may not be the case next year. And so the focus on this presence allows you to grow your business and sustain your business over time. Yeah, the last thing we want is for you to have just one or two agents that send you all of your leads. And if one of them goes out of business, finds a better inspector, suddenly you're reset down to the bottom and scrapping to get those inspections. So a good, healthy business model means that you're getting everything, right? You have agent referrals, you have paid inspections, you have direct organic results. So these are the things that um, we're going to talk about in this portion is how do you keep that healthy pipeline of business coming in so that you're not so reliant on just a couple people. All right, so SEO is important, so we know that. So how does it work? So a lot, there's a big misperception out there that Google's algorithm is this wild roller coaster that changes daily and one thing shoots you to the top or shoots you to the bottom. It does change a lot, but keep in mind it has smoothed out over time. So it takes into account good habits and not necessarily one thing will boost you to the top. And I think it's important to know that um, as the search engines constantly refine their algorithms, either as a business owner, you have to stay on top of that, or you should be paying somebody that does stay on top of that so that you know the things you're doing are still the best things that you can be doing to rank higher. Um, because like anything, it's a constantly evolving um, ecosystem. And so, you know, as a business owner, I'm sure that's not what you want to hear is, oh, this is one more thing I have to keep up with. Um, so, of course, consider your time versus your money and where you want to allocate each. 
And one thing I'll tell you is I, that was my full-time job at Home Advisor was to keep track of algorithm changes. And so while it, it doesn't have the drastic swings, it does change and what the importance level of certain tasks changes over time. And that's something I watch daily in search results. So it definitely is a full-time job and something uh, worth investing time or money into. One huge takeaway here is that it does not happen overnight anymore. There were days not that long ago, maybe 10 years ago, when somebody would say, hey, I'm gonna get you to the number one page in Google. And they could by just blasting a bunch of keywords onto your website, by maybe submitting your website to hundreds of directories. And so that was the old days. There's still a lot of these uh, kind of more questionable methods that are being marketed nowadays to home inspectors. And so our whole goal here is we're gonna go over the things that you should be doing. And if people that are trying to sell you SEO, digital marketing services aren't doing these, then either they're you know, snake oil salesmen trying to scam you or they're just not up to date with the latest um, in SEO and how it works. And so they're trying to apply old tools to the new environment and it's gonna end up being a waste of your money. So if nothing else, we hope that you're more educated consumers um, because it's not about gaming the system anymore. Uh, Google is heavily incentivized to deliver quality results that reflect real world legitimacy of the business. And so we're gonna talk to you about what it means to appear as a legitimate business in the digital world. Just like you wanna appear professional in the real world, every time you meet somebody you wanna come across as a professional home inspector, you have to do the same thing digitally nowadays. And so yes, we'll get into now what these key components are. And one, one point on that, I'll equip you guys, I'll save you time. The number one thing you're going to get pitched is guaranteed first page ranking on Google. Keep in mind, they don't specify which keywords and how long. That typically just means for your own business name, which you're going to rank first for anyway, after a few months. Um, so just keep in mind, if anyone promises that it can happen overnight, um, they're probably just snake oil salesmen and it's probably not gonna work out. So uh, we're gonna dive into each one of these in more detail. Just right off the bat, the top SEO ranking factors are content, links, your website, citations, and reviews. And so we'll dive into each one of these and see what they mean and um, kind of educate you so that you know what you're getting should you end up paying for marketing services. So this is where you wanna be. This is the goal to tie it all together. Those factors are all the things that help you get here. And that's where you wanna rank. So all these different tasks are gonna help you show up on the Google Maps 3 pack, not just one thing that someone tells you to do. It's a combination of things that get you there. Yeah, it's a long-term game. When we are um, talking to prospective clients for SEO, digital marketing services, we let them know this is something that you have to kind of hang tight with for six to nine months. That's how long it takes to establish legitimacy. Just like um, in the real world, you can't just come in and say, I'm the best at something and then instantly be recognized as the best. You have to earn it. And so this is why we don't recommend SEO maybe to brand new home inspectors, at least not paying for it. You can start to lay the groundwork, start to get the foundation for your digital marketing presence with a good website. But um, this is that long-term game. This is how you're gonna be a successful inspector for years to come. All right, content. So we're gonna dive into the, one of the most important factors uh, that Google tells us to their algorithm. So content is text, images, videos on your website. So anything like the pages on your website, service area pages, and blog posts. So any text on your website we're calling content. So one, some of the keys here as one of the most heavily weighted factors is using keywords naturally on your site. Uh, do not just write home inspector Denver or home inspector Jacksonville 100 times on your site. That could get you penalized. You want helpful content on your site's pages. So think of really about talking to your customers and your agents when you're writing content for your site. Um, blogging is a big one we do for our home inspectors for our SEO plans. It's something every inspector I think should be doing from the start, whether it's spending 20 minutes a week dedicating to it or hiring someone. Uh, and then off-site content, guest posting, um, maybe getting an account on active rain or social media. So when we're doing these presentations, I think the question we always get is, well, what do I know? What do I write about? Mm -hmm. What do you tell them? I tell them you know more than the average home buyer a hundred times over. So everything you're learning this week and everything that came from your prior experience in construction or roofing or plumbing, you can write a 300 word article on any of those topics and it's going to be helpful to someone. So keep in mind, you have a captive audience with your home buyers and agents that you can send them these articles. So you're not just publishing it and hoping someone reads it, you actually can email it to them. You can put it in your follow-up emails or your reminder emails. So everything you learn this week and some can be a blog post. And I think this also ties into the uh, content marketing that we'll dive a little bit more into. As you write blog posts, that's a good reason to send newsletters maybe to all of the past clients and agents that you've ever worked with. 
and that's a brand impression. And it's useful information that might think, uh, the home buyer might think, ah, I remember that this home inspector was great. I'm gonna recommend them to a friend who's just about to buy a home, or the agent who's about to refer home inspectors for another purchase. They're gonna think of your name again. And so content is a great reason to reach out instead of just sending out yet another email saying, hey, don't forget that I'm a home inspector and I'd love your business. This is giving them value first. And so, you know, some examples of, of uh, good articles what to expect from your home inspection. That's something that all of you can write. And some of those differentiators that we talked about earlier, whether you're the type that is gonna walk through and educate the client about the home, or whether you're somebody that's gonna just really focus on quality. We have some inspectors that only do one inspection per day, and they say, I've blocked off my entire day for you. And so that's their differentiator. They charge a little bit more for it, but it's something that helps them sell and differentiate from the other home inspectors in their market. And you'll get to learn your most common issues that come up on a home inspection. Each one of those should be in an article that you prepare home buyers with before they meet you on site. But just think about being helpful and these should be quality and you should do it consistently. Those are going to be the keys to really help you out. All right, so links is another big deal when it comes to SEO. Outside of content, this is the most heavily weighted ranking factor. Uh, basically, a link is any other website that includes hyperlinks, something that's clickable that goes to your website. And so this can be, for example, a real estate agency that you work with often. Maybe they have a preferred vendors page, and if you click on that page, they have a list of home inspectors. You want to be on that list. Some of them will do it for free. They might, you might just be able to ask them, hey, we've worked together a lot. Would you mind putting me on that page? And they say, oh, yeah, of course. So keep in mind that this is not always something you have to pay for. Um, for a lot of agencies, they just do it. Yeah, and good content actually helps you get more links to your site. So the better articles you write, an agent may just link to it on their own, but it also gives you um, some good content to come to them and say, hey, would you mind linking to this article? Um, I think it'll be helpful to your clients. You can outreach to people for getting these links. And so just think of all the places that are in related industries that might link to you. You don't want to go to industries that don't really make sense. So maybe you have a friend that's a uh, dentist. There's no reason for a dentist to be linking to a home inspector site. And so that's not something that you would necessarily want because you might even be penalized. It, it might look illegitimate and like you're trying to kind of game the system. And so you want it to be related, you know, real estate agencies, maybe uh, lending offices. And then we also do some competitive research for our marketing plans. And it, there's software out there where you can actually look at your competition and see who links to their site to help give you uh, some starting points to start for your link research. Yeah, so that's some of the more advanced stuff. If you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to us. It's something that we include in some of the marketing services we do for our customers. So we talk about getting links. There's easy links out there that you can get. So there's some directories that you can just sign up for and ask them to add a link to your site and they add it. And then there's a couple other places like forum signatures. All of you should have a link to your website in your forum signature. And we talked about agent and partner pages, associations and organizations often link to your website. Um, and then third party sites. So if you do sign up with a, uh, a home advisor or a thumbtack, just keep in mind, they also usually link to your website. So there's a side benefit there. And you don't necessarily need to be paying HomeAdvisor for their services. You can just create your profile on HomeAdvisor, fill out the name, address, and phone number, and that's an inbound link, and that helps you just appear as if you're a more legitimate business because you're listed everywhere. And one caveat, we always say never to pay for links. Um, chambers of Commerce are an exception because you're paying for membership in a chamber and they tend to link to your site. So that is actually a very valuable link is local chambers and associations, but never pay outright for someone to just link to your site. Um, it's kind of a fuzzy line there. All right, so website. Of course, this is um, a big deal. All of you need a website. It's, it's very, very difficult to do business nowadays without a website. The, there's several components to making sure your website is uh, successful and usable and does what you want it to, which is get you more business. Uh, the user interface is a big deal. I, if you search for home inspectors in your market, you may find a lot of them that look like the one on the left. This is a, a website that was probably made 20 years ago. They haven't really updated their um, color scheme. The fonts are hard to read. If you look at it on mobile, you're having to pinch and zoom. And so that makes it uh, difficult to use. And uh, most uh, people, I think, at least in our age bracket, if they get to a site like that, they immediately swipe back and will go to something else. And so as uh, new home inspectors, which many of you are, you have an awesome opportunity to create a brand new modern site, maybe like the one on the right, that's uh, very user friendly, very modern feeling, very usable. In all the sites that we build, we include two different kinds of links on the top. One is to 
the phone number. So there are definitely people that they just want to call, they want to schedule home inspection, and we want them to have that opportunity. Um, most website traffic now is on mobile devices, and so it's very important that you give them that ease of being able to click to call. Now, of course, the, uh, the millennial, on the other hand, will probably avoid using a phone at all costs. And so for that reason, we have online schedulers that we embed in every website we build. Um, if you're using Spectora, that integrates directly with your Spectora account so that somebody can uh, fill out all the details about their property, their contact info, what services they're after, and that becomes a booked inspection. Uh, you can get paid, get agreements signed directly. And so we, we try and make it easy for whatever the demographic, whatever the generation um, that's operating in your market, they're able to do what uh, you want them to do. That's what we call a conversion. Conversion is either scheduling inspection or giving you a call. You guys just have a unique opportunity and all I'll say is make sure that you don't skimp on the website because your competition may have sites uh, that you see up here on the slides. Just make sure you really press that advantage as much as you can by getting a modern, clean website um, and not necessarily going with your neighbor's nephew. Um, that could save you a few bucks. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, mobile friendliness, another huge factor when it comes to websites. Like I said, most traffic, over 50%, is on mobile devices nowadays. If your site requires pinching, zooming, maybe it's the buttons are too small to actually tap, then you might lose business there and you might not even know. And so make sure that your site is responsive. That's the kind of website lingo. A responsive site means that it looks different on a big screen versus on a mobile screen. And so uh, with all the sites we build, when it's on a small screen, the buttons are bigger, they're easier to tap, the font is a little bit bigger, you're able to read it, you scroll through it, everything is very optimized for the mobile experience. And it is a factor in Google's algorithm now. So keep in mind, if your site is not mobile friendly, uh, you can actually suffer in the search results. And you'll see in the example here, big clear buttons, because when someone's on a phone, they're ready to hire, not necessarily read through your site. Page load speed matters a lot now. Google has updated their algorithm to include this uh, recently. And so again, use professionals. Your website is gonna be your initial presentation to, to a lot of people. As soon as they hear about you, they're gonna search for you. And your website is gonna be what maybe they judge you on in terms of if you're a legitimate business. And so your page load speed is gonna matter not only for if they just click back because they don't wanna wait for it to load, but also for um, Google ranking factors. Uh, I think there's some research, if it takes longer than one second, you end up losing like 50% of your traffic. And so just keep that in mind. Maybe next time you're out of Wi-Fi, if you're um, you know, just on LTE service, do a search for your site on your phone. See how quickly it loads up. This yeah. is uh, important stuff. Something to keep in mind, if you, for those of you that are thinking about building your own website or having someone else build it, make sure you're paying attention to page speed. Uh, take advantage of being new. We, we've said this several times. Uh, here's some examples of sites that you maybe don't want to be. The site on the left, the color scheme is difficult to read. There's a lot of colors going on there. It just isn't as inviting to the eye and the user will probably leave. On the mobile screen, you can see there's scroll bars. You're gonna to have to scroll around to read the same paragraph. So that's tough. The one in the top right, very crowded. We definitely want you to display all of the badges that you've worked hard to earn, but you don't want it to be so cluttered that people get very overwhelmed when they come to your site. And so, and then the one on the right, the color scheme is difficult. Um, it's gray on black. The uh, images, they don't pop. So instead of being these pages, maybe try to be these. These are some sites we've built that we hope are very open, very modern feeling. They invite you in. They uh, work well on mobile devices. They kind of constrain the user's options. The one on the right is a form that just has a few choices, and then you click to schedule or get contacted. And we still want to integrate all your InterNACHI badges in a very elegant way, but we try to reduce clutter and overall agents and clients just end up liking this better. And you can use this as a marketing pitch. So when you're making agent presentations and you have a site that looks like this, you can use that as a differentiator. So as yeah. we go back in the talk, it's another way to stand, to stand out. Yeah, and a lot of this um, isn't just opinion, but this comes from making thousands of inspector websites and as well as all the research that's done into good user interface and good user experience. These are the things that keep a potential client on your site longer or get them to become paying customers. And so there's a ton of research on this. We keep up with it all. We try to ensure that our websites are giving the most bang for buck to all of our inspectors. All right, next we'll talk about citations. So this is just your business information listed on other sites across the internet. So keep in mind here that consistency is the key. So when you create accounts in other places, just make sure that your business is listed the same in terms of the phone number, address, 
um, in the way you name your business. Yeah, this would be as if you were asking somebody's uh, closest friends where he lived and you got four or five different answers. You would think that maybe that person's kind of a shady individual and you wouldn't trust them as much. Same goes for your business. You want the same exact thing listed everywhere and make sure that comes right down to like whether you list LLC or incorporated at the end. You want the same phone number and the same address. You don't want it to look like you're a fly-by-night place that's just trying to game the system by having different listings everywhere that you are. And you only need them in a couple of key places across the internet. You don't need to blast it out to thousands of websites. Um, just the main core ones that Google relies on are the most important. So reviews, this is the last area we'll talk about and is obviously uh, very important for your business and how you grow it. Bottom line, more positive reviews in more places matters. Yelp and Google are the ones that we believe you should focus the most on. They seem to have the best return. So here's this nice stat that 93% of consumers read online reviews. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Um, but keep in mind, even if you get a bad review, um, it doesn't completely take you out. So you need to remember that people will still use you. 3.3, I believe, is the minimum rating that people would consider engaging with. Yeah, if you have less than that, then maybe people are going to turn away. What we always say, uh, because we always get the question, what do I do when I get that crazy customer, that crazy agent that just leaves a bad review for BS reasons? We say, hey, don't worry about it so much. Keep getting positive reviews. You should be asking for reviews constantly so that when you, if you have hundreds of reviews, one bad review is not going to really matter as much on your average. If you only have two reviews, then obviously that one bad review can dramatically affect it. And so the idea is to constantly be asking for reviews. This is just a screenshot of our software. We have automated follow-ups that ask everybody for reviews up to three times after the inspection. This is what we found the best way to get reviews. At, at least twice you should ask. Just remember that agents are busy, clients are busy, they're in the middle of what's probably one of the biggest purchases of their life. And so they don't always think about reviewing you, even if they thought you did a phenomenal job. And so this is actually a setup of a case study we'll dive into where he set reviews to go out, uh, I can't quite make out the text, maybe a few hours after, a few days after, and then about a week and a half after the inspection. And what he found, instead of just asking once, but asking three times, his reviews just shot through the roof. He is getting tremendous results. He's now expanding. He has two inspectors working for him. It all happened within a year just because he got a lot more reviews. And you guys can't be shy about this. I want to say as new inspectors, you're, you're probably going to be hesitant to want to ask for reviews, but have confidence in your ability to connect with people. So even right away, these home buyers may, maybe don't know you're brand new. And so you give them a good experience, let them know you'll be sending them an email to leave you a review. Otherwise, send them to a contact form on your site. We'll get into that in a minute. So this is the case study we talked about. When we first started working with him, I think he had less than a dozen reviews. And we started tweaking his marketing as well as asking uh, how we asked for reviews. And we played around with the different timings, tweaked the text on how we asked for reviews. And now he has over 100. He is getting a lot of organic business. So he feels great not having to worry about agent, the same few agents always referring to him. And so this is just something that uh, is very possible. It's very possible very quickly. Just make sure you're asking for it. He got over his initial fear of asking too much. And like we said in the previous slide, be okay asking three times and space it out because people are busy and they'll just ignore the email if they've already left you a review or if they don't want to. But don't be afraid to ask because that's how you grow your business. And reviews aren't just for SEO. People are willing to pay you more money if you're a more highly reviewed inspector. So of course I think all of you want to be the premium home inspector. You can charge more, you can work less, that's, that's the dream. Reviews are a huge part of that and so make sure that, especially when you know you wowed a client or an agent, tell them, hey, I'm going to be sending you a link that's going to ask for a review. I really would appreciate it. That's how my business grows. The agents will get it because that's how their business grows as well. And the home buyers will, if they've appreciated your service, they'll be happy to. And so keep asking. Keep a focus on getting more reviews. It's going to help out your business. All right, now we're going to move into uh, just a few bonus tips for you on how to wow your clients and agents with the inspection experience. What we want to convey is that you're more than just the inspection. You're going to deliver more than just a report. You're creating an experience for your clients and agents, and it begins when they first reach out and contact you or first see your website, and it continues maybe even years down the road as they continue to refer back to your inspection and they think back on um, all the help that you gave them with this big purchase. So just keep the, change your mindset. You're more than just this one thing that you give them. Yep. And to build a brand, you really have to pay attention to all of these factors, all these touch points of your client's journey and your agent's journey 
interacting with you and your brand. Yeah, and everything that you do, every single touch point is part of your brand perception. So we're gonna give you a few quick tips on uh, things that you can do to improve this. So b the ability to take payments and have your contract signed online is huge. You're going to want to use some software that helps you do this. You don't wanna be the guy that shows up fumbling with papers and then you're having to worry about filing it. Some people are even getting less, um, they, they don't like doing the swipe thing anymore. They just wanna take care of it online before they even show up. As an inspector, that's great for you to be able to have payment already handled before you show up because then you don't have to worry about hounding them for payments. And so um, with our software platform, that is all kind of baked in and integrated to where your customer can pay, accept your agreement, all online, usually in under a minute, and, and then it's all taken care of for you. We also lock the report so that they can't access it until they've done these things to protect you liability-wise. And so that's the other flip side to consider is that how do you protect yourself from somebody that just wants a report but maybe they haven't paid you yet or signed your agreement yet. Uh, you know, you can blame it on the software if you're using us and make sure that that happens. And from an agent perspective, use this as another differentiator to say, hey, I take care of our mutual clients quickly, easily, it's all online. Agents have been soaking it up and they really will love it. So um, reminders, education, some of that content that we talked about earlier that you've been building, these are great things that you can send to your agents as well as your clients to just stay top of mind, to provide continual value. We have some home inspectors that like to position themselves as maybe the, um, the educator of a home, the kind of home consultant. And they do that by continually sending resources, articles they've written, quick videos they've shot on how to change your furnace filters, how to change your swamp cooler filters, things like this. And that's just a great way to continue staying top of mind in both clients and agents and continuing that referral cycle that's gonna build your business over time. And a little SEO tip here, everyone should be writing an article on what to expect or how to have, make the most of your home inspection and link to it from your reminder uh, email that you send to the client. And also the text reminders, agents love those. Yeah, when we rolled out text reminders, text follow-ups, you know, the, the modern generation, so much is done via text message. So we definitely recommend um, looking at your software options, saying which ones appeal to the type of audience I'm trying to reach. And then of course, uh, your report, as we mentioned earlier, it's a huge differentiating factor. Many of your competitors may be using long, dense, hard to read PDFs. What we found when we were doing our early research with focus groups of clients and agents is that those just weren't liked. They weren't usable, they weren't understandable. And so when we built our report, we built a web-based format that feels very much like using a website. There's boxes that blow up for photos, you can view videos directly in the reports. There's tools for the agent to put together their uh, repair request list. A lot of these tools, uh, jump links, easy filters, um, are things that can set you apart. Of course, we still have the PDF. We still automatically generate that for you and you can use it and reference it. And that's what maybe goes on file with your agents. But what we found is that the modern report really helps the inspector differentiate themselves from especially some of the aging competition. And agents are all about vanity. So keep in mind, agents love how a modern clean report looks and that's your audience. And then keep in mind home buyers, they're used to using modern websites, Facebook, Pinterest, all these other sites in this report. If it looks closer to that, they're gonna feel better about the transaction, better about the report, and it's a win-win. Automated follow-ups, we mentioned them in terms of uh, getting reviews. Just wanna reiterate here, it's a great way to stay top of mind. Some people will send their automated follow-ups even a month or two after the inspection, just to, you know, be remembered and uh, maybe get that referral from somebody that thinks, oh yeah, that was a really good home inspection experience. When my brother buys a house, I'm gonna refer this home inspector. So leverage technology. There's no reason for the modern home inspector to be writing the same emails to every single client and every single agent on every single inspection. It just doesn't make sense when you can automate this. Our email systems use smart placeholders so that you can fill out personalized information. They will feel like personal emails but you only have to set it up once and it will work on every inspection you do. And there's lots of strategies here to utilize these. Just feel free to reach out to us and ask. There's lots of good ways you can stay top of mind with agents uh, and actually get client referrals. Bottom line, as we said in the beginning, you need to set yourself apart from your competition. This is a competitive industry. Uh, many of you are going to be getting out there and realizing, wow, there are a lot of other home inspectors in my market. What we see every day from our vantage point of working with thousands of inspectors, we see what they're doing, the ones that stay ahead of the game, the ones that grow their business. Some of our inspectors in their first year get $150,000, like hundreds of inspections in their first year. 
we, this is where a lot of the information in this presentation came from. These are the things that they're doing. And it takes work, it takes some effort, but by delivering that value, by setting yourself apart from your competition, by differentiating, this is how you become a very successful home inspector. It's not unrealistic to be hiring a employee within a year, year and a half, uh, growing to a multi-inspector company very quickly. We see it all the time. Set aside the time, money, mind space to put some thought towards these things. Um, it takes intentionality, I think, carving out time to actually work on your business because you're going to handle the inspecting of the home just fine. That'll get better. But set aside the time to dedicate to the expect inspection experience, your marketing, advertising, and you'll be all right. So we know that a lot of this was very overwhelming to you, especially as you're learning about the home. Um, so as we have been doing this class, we've been doing it almost two years now. And what we heard um, in terms of a lot of the common needs are Yes, inspectors need a website and they need software. They need uh, Google My Business and Yelp set up. They want help with those automated emails, maybe getting their online scheduler set up on their website. And so we've put together a package for this. Uh, you can find out more information on our website. Uh, it includes all of these things. It ends up saving you about $1,000 over doing them all separately. We did this because we really want to help the new inspector start off right and stay in business. If uh, you stay in business, we stay in business. And so we do everything we can to help you not just with creating great software, but with doing all the marketing, with doing the things that we talked about in this video, doing them right so that you can stay in business. And the biggest piece of feedback we get is we're your tech team, basically. So it's things you probably don't want to think about um, that are our specialties. And uh, because you're in the InterNACHI class, we have a special deal with InterNACHI. You get $100 off, so that uh, what is currently priced at $69.99, you get for $15.99. And all you have to do is reach out to us via uh, our chat bubble on Spectora.com and say, I was in the InterNACHI class and we take $100 off of your Jumpstart package. So again, it, with any of the stuff, whether it's the software, the website, when you're ready to do paid advertising, when you're ready to do SEO, content writing, we also do email newsletters now. Uh, we do all of these things for our home inspectors and uh, our home inspectors are doing very well and we get great feedback from it. So we'd uh, love to chat with you. Anyway, thank you so much for your time and your attention today. Uh, usually when we're doing this presentation, we have a lengthy Q&A afterwards um, because of the video context of this. Uh, we can't do that here, but we'd love to answer any questions you have. You can always go to spectora.com. We have a green chat bubble on every single page on the site, and we're happy to answer any questions about our software, SEO, digital marketing, ad campaigns, any of the things we covered today, or even just general uh, conversation about the platform. Kevin and I are usually pretty responsive and we also have an excellent support team to uh, just kind of give you the information. We want you to succeed as a home inspector. Thanks so much for the attention, guys. We hope we gave you some actionable tips and some good takeaways. But as Mike said, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. We're always available for you. All right, thank you so much.